So the following video is basically the the process behind making this and why I made it and why I'm testing around with it. There's kind of a lot of stuff that's going on that is a little bit superfluous to like the actual uh, you know end result of testing this thing. I kind of wanted to share the whole journey of kind of going from an idea, which was buy a couple of little servo gimbals and see what I can do with them, and follow it all the way to completion when I finally found a way for this thing to potentially be useful. I've not found the perfect answer yet, and I've got a couple ideas on how to make it take the next step, but what you're about to watch is kind of the journey from start to finish of why I've been messing around with this. Alright, so I bought a few of these a few weeks back. I don't necessarily know how they work or if they even work at all, but they're basically servo gimbals with pan tilt head. And I got them to see if I could make one of two things. One would be for like the jet or the plane fixed wing that I've got to be able to do a pan tilt kind of situation on the for the FPV, so you can kind of like look around in real time. And the other one is to take it on a squirt um, and use it as a gimbal. So we're gonna see if we can actually get this thing assembled and figure out how to do it um, <laughs> because there's no instructions. I bought like the little cheap Chinese version, so we'll see. Uh, but I am excited about the possibilities. Like that. Okay, so I've got some random uh, Fly Sky receiver. This is the controller that it's bound to. Power supply. Ooh. They're like bound together somehow. Must be set for some sort of sweet. That works pretty well. I don't know what these clippies are for, but not what I'm going to use it for. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Paul. I'm a huge nerd. You what, mate? <laughs> Say what? No, 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 no. <laughs> so obviously the real strength of this is not going to come from when we have it set up to a single controller, but instead when we have it either bound to a second radio to use as like a pan tilt for um, like using it as a like almost as like a quasi gimbal combined with real steady go. Um, to make like some more complicated gimbal-y kinds of moves or um, when we put it on a pot switch so it will hold the last position rather than recenter when the stick centers so we got to figure out either which way we want to do it and obviously I got a couple of these to play with them in different ways so like this one maybe we'll just use this as a uh, pan tilt head for like a plane, so I've got to figure out how to wire this into um, either like a, a, he a, a head module, like where it follows the goggles, which I can't really do with DJI, um, or I uh, should just kind of keep it separate and figure out some other things, some other ways to play with it or, or run it in through Betaflight or something like that. So I'm excited uh, to make the next steps, but uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. It's working really well. First thing that I want to figure out with this is whether or not it has enough strength to maneuver a GoPro. I think it does doesn't seem like that would be too much to ask for it, but we gotta 
I'm going to try to just chop off these little bits here and uh, figure out a way to mount a GoPro to it. But I think I think it should have enough strength to do it. I'm worried a little bit about it kind of like leaning over the front like this, but I think, I think it'll be all right. <clears throat> Luma grip. It's actually pretty impressive. So we're rolling. We'll just start it with some pans and tilts. Just trying to be nice and smoothish. And then I was gonna just try to like pick it up. So like let's pretend like we're flying it sideways, like this. So we'll just kind of tilt it as we go. some up and down I don't know let's pop it in real safe see what it does real steady go it's probably gonna be kind of motion blurry because the so little light in here yeah it's pretty bobbly I don't know if that's gonna work What? No, this is side by side here. This is just turning left, right. Yeah, you can see it go. Yeah, I figured real estate wouldn't want to smooth that out too much. Yeah, and this is when I picked it up. Yeah, especially with the light like shining on the lens, you can really see it just. I bet you with a little more light, it would look a lot better. Like when it's not getting as many motion blur issues. And that light, that stupid desk light is not right there. <sighs> okay, I'll render that out and think about it for a bit. I wonder, yeah, I don't know about what that could mean, what that could look like. I like that it, I like that you can look down, that the down, the look down looked good. So I wonder about just maybe simplifying this device and just using the looking down part and use it to like look off the front of a drone or like down from the front of a drone like this. I wonder what the utility could be in that. Or use like the uh, cam stabe mode in beta flight, something like that. Yeah. yeah, I think there's some stuff to play around with. Let's try, let's first of all try just cam stabilizer and see if we can get some interesting things with real study and the the pan tilt. I know that uh, Andy from uh, Shen Drones has done some stuff with that, so I think that there's uh, some pot potential there. Um, and then you can kind of use the down angle to do some stuff. Maybe there's some like chase quad applications. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah. So we'll start playing around with that. Let's test out the cam stabilizer mode in Beta Flight and see what we could do with that, and just keep tinkering. So I ended up doing a whole bunch of fiddling and this is kind of what I came up with. So originally I had both servos installed and I actually managed to get the cam stay tilt thing working on two axes, right? So I would pitch it and it would roll it. Um, I wanted to kind of take an incremental step here and just test on the roll axis. So what I've done is I've created, I mounted this little servo gimbal up on the just the roll axis. It's a little bit wobbly and it's not going to be a great perfect solution long term. Um, but what is ended up is that now when I plug this in, whole drone, servo activates, and now when I roll, the gimbal counteracts the roll movement and stays relatively level. You can see that it's pretty jittery because I'm using really crappy servos, but I think it's a good start to kind of start figuring out I think the servo's overshooting too. But what we can start thinking about is can we keep the you know, this axis level so that during flight we're not messing around. We don't have to fix and post whether or not the gimbal is level. So that's pretty cool. 
it's a, it's incremental steps. This is not going to be the final solution, but uh, it's at least something. It's a step, step along the right direction. So I actually have the servo. It gave it its own, its own flight controller down in there. If you can even see that, but there's a separate flight controller just for the servo, so that I can change settings on just it. I'm gonna put my little Insta360 Go there so we can see what the gimbal is doing mid-flight. <laughs> it's a pretty crazy setup. Okay, let's see how this thing is gonna do. And as always with YouTube videos, gotta do all of that. Please, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. We do more content like this. I see that like 33% of you are subscribed, which is great, but that means there's like 66 that are not choosing to click that button. So I mean, whatever. And uh, you know, always leave a comment. Please like the video or dislike the video if you don't like it. Uh, and that is always a huge help to me. So please consider doing all those things as part of your viewing process. Thanks very much, everybody. Let's get back to it. See that it gave up for a second. I think that'll do it for one first test run. Let's uh, grab the footage off this camera and go see how it looks just for a quick first run. So this should be this one. <laughs> That's very stuttery. It is relatively level though. You know, on the turn, it's, it's kind of given up a little bit. Felt like it was better there. Oh dude, there's some ducks right there. I didn't even notice. It was very stuttery. But like in those sharp turns, like it's more or less stable. Let's put it into real study, see what it does. <laughs> it's not, not looking good though. So this is without horizon stabilization on in real study. But first of all, it is amazing how much that takes out in terms of like jittery. And you can see that like the horizon, you're losing the horizon a little bit, but maybe you're, dude, those ducks in here hardly wake up. What the heck? Um, you can see that it's losing a little bit. It's like, it's not quite corrected enough. Um, but I mean, it's definitely helping it. And so like, so if you think about the way real study works, like when it is twisted, it has to crop in on the image. So you're basically throwing away information, right? So if you can keep the camera more stable, eventually the goal will be that it's going to like potentially, potentially it would be that they would have to throw away less information. So you'd be able to pull in more, keep the shot wider and not make it nearly as uh, pronounced that you're pushing in and out. So if we could get the gimbal to be smoother or the gimbal, the servo, which I think we can do with a much nicer servo, um, we might be able to get a much better image out of real study by stabilizing the horizon for it, or at least helping stabilize the horizon. So now if we go in, so I'm gonna even increase the smoothness, lock horizon. So now we're both stabilizing the horizon on real study, and we're stabilizing it practically in the camera. So hopefully like the combination of the two makes it even better and better and better. So like when you stabilize with uh, 
real steady, it definitely starts to push in. You can see how much it's pushed, like how, how zoomed in that image is right now. Let's try low smoothness with a fast correction. See if it helps push out some of those jiggles. And again, nicer servo. We're gonna get we're gonna have a lot less of those jiggles, and it's gonna produce a better and better image. So I think I've got nicer servos here. So we'll we'll see what happens with them. Wow. So maybe that's the answer. So let's crank the the cropping speed all the way up so it's responding as fast as it can. We still have the horizon locked. See how it does that correcting against these jiggles. So they're obviously still there. <laughs> a little bird flying through frame, that's cool. So like right there with that sharp turnaround, I really expect real estate to just push in. But because it's being stabilized somewhat on the, the roll axis, it's taken out a lot of that crop. And so it's I it, this is very, like to, to my eyes, this is a very unique looking real study example. Like that turnaround, that little pole, like I expected that to be really abrupt within real study like and this one here is much much better now because like when we looked at it before with the cropping it was way 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 cropping in but now with low smoothness even with the horizon locked we're not losing a lot of information that's that's pretty cool i i'm kind of excited about that. okay so i've swapped in a much nicer servo gimbal or servo from uh spectrum it's like it comes with one of their wing platforms um Hello. Looks like the voltage regular I gave it is uh, failing every time the servo powers up. So, oh. yeah, so I guess we'll have to figure out a new five volt situation. So like these <clears throat> little plastic gear servos that I was originally using um, don't consume very much power, uh, but apparently the five volt regulator that I've got in there um, that's powering the servo is getting overwhelmed. Like you can hear it start. And as soon as it does, the uh, flight controller that it's on resets. It's because the five volt is getting overwhelmed and so it's never initializing. Crap. Okay, so, but, uh, and that, that voltage regulator is, uh, doesn't do very well. Doesn't do very well on 6S, but on 3S it works. So this cable here is 3S. So now you can see it's still got a little bit of a jitter, so I'm kind of nervous about that. Like, I wonder if there's like some sort of PID kind of thing that I can turn down. And it's only like in weird spots, like sometimes it's fine and then sometimes it gets a little bit crazy. So anyway, we'll have to figure out, yeah, like what is, what's going on there? Well, that's, uh, that's the flight controller responding to So I gotta figure out how to step up the amount of voltage that I'm giving it. I might have to find a bigger five volt regulator um, or give it its own battery or something like that. Cause that's not, you know, it's obviously not working on six cell at all. Yep. Shoot. All right, I'm gonna pop outside again and do a little comparison now with the uh, the new gimbal is on here. I've just gone ahead and gone the lazy route and put a second battery to power the, the separate flight controller and gimbal. And then I'm also putting a hard mounted um, GoPro Hero 8 on the bottom so that we can compare the difference in real study after the fact. All right, so I just ran another test where I compared them side by side. I could see the gimbal was freaking out a lot. Um, so I'm gonna try to look mostly at the spots where the gimbal was not messing up in like similar kinds of situations. Um, but I don't know if we're gonna, I don't know if it's gonna be very usable test footage because the, like it just the, the gimbal continues to just kind of and really mess with like the footage that we would be getting. So I'm gonna plug them into the computer. We'll see what we can get. Okay, so I'm re redoing this test. Apparently 
real estate was not having this GoPro being upside down. It just was not happy with it. Um, even though there's settings in there to change that, I messed with them and it just wasn't having it. So I'm putting it right side up. So you can see a little bit of this camera, but it's the best we're gonna be able to do right now. Um, so we're gonna go redo that test right now. Okay, so I'm gonna just kind of like play pause my way through this once, just kind of reacting to it. Um, I've watched a little bit, but I've tried, tried not to. Um, and then I'll play it through full afterwards. Uh, so like this first pass is just going to be me kind of like looking at it, reacting to it, seeing what I do and don't like. Um, and then we'll pass it along back to, uh, and you can just watch it all side by side in real time. So taking off. Okay. That all looks pretty similar. You can see that, like, look at the, the width already on this turn. So like you can see the angle of the turn up in the top left here on the DVR. And then obviously both are stabilized, um, but look at the cropping factor on the gimbal one versus the hard mount. Like you can see chimney, chimney, car, car, the cr car's even cropped on that one. So like the gimbal, because it's pushing it sideways or gimbal, if you can call it that, is pushing it sideways <clears throat> to try to keep it more level. We've got a lot more in frame and that's allowing real study to use more of the information. So you can see like, look at the chimney, chimney. Uh, you can't even see this thing on the right side. Like, look at the crop there. Boom. You can see the Merc there. Um, you can't even see the cars over here, over there. <laughs> like, that's nuts. Um, yeah, it just pushes in. Sorry, the playback is a little bit glitchy sometimes. Um, yeah, look at that. Oh, that is so cool that it's working. Obviously, like, there's still little jitters in the gimbal. Like, right, like, you watch the gimbal right there, so I'm backing up. Look at the gimbal going nuts in the DVR. But I mean, like, Real Estate does a good job of taking that out. But, like, it's still showing up a little bit. So, holy cow. I can't believe it's working that well. So, like, let's go back to right here. So, big banked turn. You can see we're almost at a 45-degree angle to come through this. Gimbal side. So, gimbal and hard mount are the same there. That's interesting. Take it a step forward. A little bit wider now. You can see the car. Um, and then at the end of the turn, it's a little bit wider, but not by much. Big cranked turn there. A lot more on the car, but not on the window. It's kind of, I guess it's probably pointed slightly in a different direction. Let this play. So it's tighter there. That's interesting. So I bet you, I bet you because we had to wait for the gimbal to come back. If we could scrub back here. So like because we're we're turning one direction, then we turn back the other. We're now we're waiting for the gimbal to come back, but the the uh, the hard mounted one is already starting to switch. So the hard mount one is actually wider right now. The one up here. That's interesting. Now they're about the same. Going in. Much, much wider on the hard mount one. And I, so, and I'm saying wider, like, it's not like wider is the most important thing in the world. Look at that big difference right there. Gimbal, you can see one, two fence posts down on each side. Can't even hardly see them on this side right there. Big old difference. Kyle comes running in. So I'm saying wider, but like, you know, essentially, if you think about it, what's happening with the hard mount side is that it's, it's pushing in on the image to crop out everything, right? And basically what that's doing is making a lower resolution image overall because, right, you're cropping in on, so if it's 2.7K, you're cropping into 4K or you're cropping into like maybe 1080p to, to hide the shaky and the, the bobble. Whereas on the gimbal side, it's letting more of that information stay available. Now it's not like, you know, it, maybe it's not going to be a deal breaker for a lot of things and maybe it's only marginally helpful, but uh, I mean, essentially you're throwing away less of the image. And I think that's important. Um, or potentially important uh, when you're, you know, trying to maximize what you can get out of a GoPro. So anyway, I'll uh, just, to, I just wanted to use that to kind of illustrate some of my perspective on what I'm seeing. Um, so now I'll actually play the clips just side by side in real time. So you can watch them uh, for yourself. You can play back, back and forth in YouTube, um, whatever you want to do. So yeah, just very interesting to see that.
so just a few final conclusions on the the g servo gimbal thing. Um, basically, what I'm seeing is that if I take Real Steady's awesome power to make this the horizon level and to make video super stabilized, and I combine it with a little bit, like some just like the bare minimum uh, effort of making a a, a physical process keep the horizon as stable as possible you get a really really cool result now obviously the hardware aspect of this is not working right the actual servo is jittery and it's adding noise to the image that we don't want but it's also opening up another kind of set of possibilities where when the drone is in a high bank maneuver it's not uh, wasting away image by forcing real steady to crop in for that reason, I'm very excited about the possibility of the servo gimbal, but I don't quite know what the next step is, right? I got to figure out how to make the hardware aspect of this work a little bit better. So thanks for coming along on this adventure, this process of kind of figuring out how to make this drone work. Um, I am super excited about what we've got so far and what it means about the future. By no means, I don't mean for this to be like, guys, go out and do this. It's amazing. But look at what the potential could be if we continue to play with this idea. So I got a couple ideas. Uh, we'll have some follow-up videos later on some, some things that I've got coming in to, to try to swap this out and make it even better. But in the meantime, thanks for coming on this adventure and stay flying. Nowhere in this video did I talk about how exactly I got cam stabilization to work and like all of the like technical process of it, but I've got another idea for a video coming later in the week that as long as I can get everything working, we'll include that section. So if you want to see how I did that, don't worry, just hit that subscribe button <laughs> and uh, later in the week, I'll actually show you how to do it and then how to maybe take advantage of it and do some cool stuff with it. So be sure to give it a follow.